so this unit is an International Serenity, and it's mine. <laughs> so that's what makes it special. Um, the International Serenity used to be the next to the closest top of the tier. It used to go straight to the Classic. Uh, now they have um, a unit between called the Globetrotter. Um, the Globetrotter is more like a Classic, except that it has a uh, more, more contemporary interior. So the Serenity um, has, as you'll see in our interior shots, uh, more refinement. It has um, Corian counters. When you order a Serenity, uh, you can do uh, a little bit of customization. So one of the things you can buy is you can get electric awning. We chose not to do that. I was convinced uh, when I bought the Airstream that that would just be another thing that would break and go wrong. So I have no proof of that, but um, Airstreams come with uh, something called a stabilizer. And this is a stabilizer right here. You can see there's a little pad that kind of comes down. They're uh, careful not to call them jacks because they don't actually jack up the Airstream. All they do is prevent it from rocking back and forth when you're inside. And the, um, the higher end Airstream, the Classic, can come with electric stabilizers. Uh, I tried to get this unit with electric stabilizers, but uh, they would not. Airstream said no. So. Hmm. Um, well, but it takes five minutes to cool them down anyway. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't know, maybe my priorities are wrong, right? <laughs> so, um, obviously this is uh, a 30-foot Airstream. I am unaware of any Airstreams that they make now that are longer than 30 feet. Um, the 35, which we have a picture of one on our website, uh, they apparently had an issue with cracking frames. So, this is a 30-foot. And uh, so the 30 foot comes with uh, dual axles. And one thing that we did is we provisioned um, this Airstream from the factory with uh, truck tires. And so they aren't the, um, you know, you can get uh, tires that are just kind of more recreational, but these are LTs, Michelin LTs. And uh, they're intended for um, more durable use and highway speeds. So I had, uh, I upgraded the vent to the metal looking finish because the plastic ones have small tabs that break off, but uh, I haven't gotten around to upgrading um, the water yet. So um, this is uh, an exhaust port for uh, the forced hot air furnace. And you also have an external uh, power port here. Do they have that in the middle case? I don't know. <laughs> I'll bet they do. Yeah. Have to look. Um, the famous stairs, the ones that I've mentioned, uh, tend it. to uh, strike on. Um, they tend to strike obstacles. So the newer ones are better. I think they have a lower profile. And we just almost backed into a uh, Arizona barrel. cactus. Yeah, Arizona cactus there. Sorry. About that. <laughs> so. Um, on the Airstream, these panels underneath are referred to as uh, dead soft, uh, the formed curved ones. And so they're vulnerable to puncture. So what Airstream did is they put um, these strike plates on the front of the Airstream, and these are stainless steel. So you can see that they've done their job. Um, they actually take quite a bit of damage from road uh, debris. And, um, I think that's one of the things you kind of notice about the newer generation of airstreams versus the old older. ones. Yep. The older ones don't have it. It's just that old metal. This one has it. Kind of ha it gives it kind of like a mask or a front it face. It sure to does, it. doesn't it? Tina says um, this uh, appearance here gives the airstream an arrogant look, but I, I actually really quite like it. So, <laughs> um, so these are clearly doing their job, and uh, they can be replaced for an airstream. Uh, they're relatively inexpensive, only. I think they're somewhere around five five hundred dollars, but, but uh, they can be replaced. So. That's the, the important piece. Yeah. Yeah. So we've gone ahead for our viewers uh, and left the trailer hooked up here. So this mechanism is called an anti-sway um, towing kit, and uh, also does um, a little bit of load distribution. So if you guys have ever seen somebody towing a trailer uh, down the highway 
and it's bent like this, you know, the truck's really sagging. Uh, that means that they probably don't have a weight distribution system on it. So uh, these um, springs down here, this part here, um, they get pulled onto these cams and then tensioned and that will cause the trailer to actually, you can actually see it actually causes it to stay level. So um, the other thing that this kit does is there are pivots. So you can see here pivots. And what that does is it keeps the trailer from fishtailing when you're uh, at speed. So um, the Airstream, I've never towed without one, but I've heard uh, rumors that the Airstream tows really, way, really well anyway, but um, but we got the, the towing kit, so. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it because it, it just definitely felt smooth. When I see trailers flying down the street or down the highway and stuff like that, going all back and forth. And they're fishtailing, yeah. Yeah, it's all over the place. Yeah. And uh, So our viewers understand, uh, Fred, uh, Fred's family and my family, we uh, kind of co-op share this trailer. So Fred's taken it on journeys and so, so have we. So um, underneath the trailer here, we'll see if Fred can be creative with his camera work. We have a spare tire, so I invite our viewers to watch our very first episode where we got a flat, so yeah. that'll be, that was fun. <laughs> um, we have a battery compartment here. Uh, the Airstream comes equipped with two 12 volt batteries, uh, deep cycle, and they are in parallel, so it gives you um, quite a bit of power to like run an inverter if you don't have the, the um, generator turned on, so. Um, this compartment here uh, is also stainless, and inside this compartment uh, you will find two propane tanks. And the way that this thing is equipped, as you can see, there's a small little arrow here, and that indicates which propane tank is presently turned on. Then you can turn on the gas, and this will turn green. Um, I don't fully understand entirely Airstream's reasoning on this, but you can't, with this particular setup, at least from the factory, have them both turned on at once. Uh, the sales guys have told me they do this so that when one runs out, you know about it and you have to switch. So it kind of informs you that um, the tanks are running low, but I think that's dumb. I think that in this modern age, you should have a fullness gauge in the Airstream, just like you do for water. And, you know, this is a problem that could be solved. I think Airstream could catch up, but um, that's, uh, that's their choice. So, so when you buy an Airstream, you can provision it for uh, what they call an awning package. So you can see running along um, the side here, uh, all the awnings over all the windows. And so that they don't come loose during transit, um, Yes, I'm tall, so I can reach up here and touch this. Uh, you can see that there are some hooks to prevent them from flapping around during transport. So we have an awning here, we have an awning here, and we have another awning back by the bedroom area here. Which doesn't have a lock, it just... It's enough, it's tensioned, right? It's tensioned enough that um, it holds itself in place. So you'll notice that the um, Airstream awnings uh, have a little uh, louvered aluminum panels I think this is an unbelievable feature. Just, um, you know, I know I criticize Airstream's quality sometimes, but these are brilliant, right? It, they prevent dry rot, and it's a it's an absolutely phenomenal feature, so. What's that little uh, thing up um, above the Airstream? Logo? So the Airstream comes equipped with um, a rear-facing camera, and uh, this is called a Voyager um, rear-facing wireless camera, and there's a matching unit. Uh, watch our first video and you can um, see for yourself uh, how that unit functions. Um, there is some funny criticism of these. Uh, the bolts that are put in the side there aren't stainless, so they rust and the rust could run down the side of the Airstream. You can see mine are rusting a little, but we live in the driest climate in the universe, so um, it's not much of a problem here, but uh, I, have, I have heard of this being a, a problem for Airstream, so. So the Airstream comes with some storage hatches, and uh, this is the first one. Um, I think it's a little silly, personally, they're, they're kind of small, but uh, we keep the, um, the wrench in here and uh, some you know, trailer, the, the hitch lock and some other things. 
uh, why this hatch isn't bigger because this extends you know inside it extends here to here uh, they did put lighting in here which is really nice so you, at the night if you need to get in there you can turn on the lighting this is a service panel um, for the water heater uh, curiously the water heater for us had quite a bit of trouble at altitude uh, sometimes it's very grumpy about lighting uh, we spoke to um, the dealer and they said uh, really that it wasn't user adjustable for the air propane mixture. So, I mean, it, it eventually will light, but at altitude uh, it does get a little bit grumpy. So, um, then there's some uh, service panel stuff for getting into the refrigerator. And uh, we have uh, fresh water for, uh, from the city, we can go to this port. And also there's a, a flush valve here for flushing out the black tank. Um, the nice thing about the Airstream is um, the, the flush valve already has a reverse flow preventer built in, although we still use separate hoses for this at all times. Nonetheless, uh, good Airstream quality, they, um, they put a reverse uh, preventer on here. Um, the fresh water has a, a pressure reducer on it, so you also that just comes built into the Airstream. When you're in the bathroom, if you uh, look underneath the service panel, um, plumbing, you can actually see uh, the pressure reducer in there. So, outside shower, and uh, we've only used this rarely, though. Funny enough, so um, I would love to have this replaced with uh, the metal equivalent. So, probably do that someday. Have you ever used it to try to clean off the bike? I've never thought of that actually. <laughs> no, I haven't. Wait for the next muddy day, and then maybe you'll try right. to use it as a. The thing, you know, what you learn about um, boondocking, uh, that's a term for camping where there's no services water becomes gold because once the trailer's unhooked there's kind of an inertia that sort of you don't want to, I don't want to hook it up again so um you know trying to conserve water but uh so that's kind of heresy but I'll have to try it sometime okay we well if you're like hooked into it actually. yeah but I guess you could probably just use the hose in anyway so uh let's see so we have power uh we've done a whole video um go watch our video on uh, generators and this is a two-phase hookup. It gives you 50 amps per phase or 100 amps total. Um, so that's a that's quote unquote a hell of a lot of power. Mm -hmm. If you're pulling a full 100 amps, it's enough to run everything in this airstream. You can run all the air conditioners, everything. Um, down here is a little bit of plumbing. We have um, this is where you hook up your uh, sewer dump, and you have a black flush and a gray. So. Um, the, this particular airstream has a 50 gallon freshwater tank and then has a 36 gallon black and a 36 gallon gray. Um, so, in theory, if you're kind of, we've seen you, it's about a 50 50. Um, down here is where airstream uh, expects you to store your sewer hose. Um, we actually have two sewer hoses because occasionally you'll run into uh, RV sites that are, they're a bit backwards. So, um, you need really quite a long run, so we also keep a, a sewer hose in the back hatch here, so or in the bumper. Um, the back hatch here is it uh, locates underneath the the bedroom, and uh, we keep the power cords in here and uh, various attachments for the generator and such. Um, it's not uh, wildly well designed, in my opinion, because uh, obviously the bike rack interferes. And uh, I've seen uh, some models of Airstreams that have this hatch positioned around the side. Uh, I vacillate on it. I guess I would prefer maybe both side hatch and a, a back hatch. Uh, we have noticed, um, you know, my complaint about the Airstream build quality, uh, the, the foam that seals that entrance um, tends to come loose easily because you're moving cords in and out. Uh, so I, I would have preferred a, a more durable uh, approach, but uh, that's the way they designed it. So. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, Airstream's sort of modernization, they have LED'd um, all the indicators uh, on the side. You know, you've got the brake lights and the, and the turn signals. Um, the clearance lights here uh, are also all uh, LED. Um, there's a light that comes down over the porch there. They call that a scare light, also LED. All the interior has been uh, done with LEDs, so. Um, and I believe... Uh, that concludes our walkthrough of our particular International Serenity 30-foot Airstream. Uh, 
a small conversation uh, about awnings and adventures with awnings. Um, so you can see that this awning is almost 30 feet long, which is a, in itself a pretty amazing engineering feat. You almost can also... feels as big as an Imperial cruiser yeah, there. That's right. Wait, Carlean class? I forget what it is. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, we're nerds. Deal yeah. with it. Um, so you can see the louvers that uh, cover up, they don't prevent it from dry rotting, which is really cool. Um, however, when the, when the awning is extended, it turns into a giant sail. And so the, um, the awning, I think it's rated to somewhere vaguely in the neighborhood of 15 mile an hour winds, but uh, it becomes very dramatic uh, when you're getting a lot of wind or rain, it'll flap around and make terrible noise. Um, it'll it'll move around this uh, central support beam that you extend when the when the awning is out, and so um, we generally, uh, if we're expecting, you know, I will check uh, the weather report, but generally, almost always, uh, we retract the awning before bed because we have had uh, more than a few uh, late night wake ups where uh, things were getting out of control. Um, the other issue uh, with the awning, and this is, um, in my opinion, a design that. Uh, uh, I think Airstream could do better. Uh, actually, whoever manufactures the awning could do better. Uh, when the awning is deployed and it rains, the awning uh, strangely will capture most of that rain, uh, kind of like a very shallow bucket. And um, we actually had an incident where uh, the rain was so heavy, it actually bent one of our um, support pillars over here. And so uh, we had to have this this entire thing replaced um, because of the uh, the very dramatic bending. We actually almost couldn't get the awning to retract. That was a nervous moment. We weren't sure <laughs> we would actually be able to tow. So um, I feel like uh, that design would be very, very, very easy to fix um, if they would simply put, um, you know, maybe every 12 inches they could put a small grommet uh, just, just stapled right into, uh, every 12 inches stapled into the awning right where it meets up with this strap and um, that would allow the water to drain out. So uh, since we don't have that, instead what we have learned is uh, it's better to deploy the awning um, on one side, just slightly lower, not all three notches, but only two notches. Yeah, yeah. And then the water will run off one corner. And generally we do this corner away from, um, away from the steps and the, the door. Yeah, so. That makes sense. Uh, just a little bit lower, it kind of used like gravity take its uh, right. direction. Just there. these little uh, dumb little RVing tips, but yeah. if they would uh, simply uh, design the awning just a little bit better, you wouldn't have to worry about it. Yeah. But um, So there's your awning tip of the day. <laughs> so um, Airstreams have um, quite a bit going on on the roof. And uh, we have uh, Airstreams paint the roof white to, to reduce temperature a little bit with the sun. Uh, what we have going on in this particular Airstream is this is a desert equipped Airstream, so it has two Dometic air conditioners on it. Um, they do somewhat feed different zones in the trailer, uh, but uh, our experience has been, essentially they both need to run simultaneously to really uh, pull the temperature down to what we uh, prefer. So um, also you have uh, vents on the top there for, um, for the black tank. Um, you can't see from here, but you will see in our aerial video, uh, this Airstream we also had equipped with 200 watts of uh, solar. There's also um, several antennas on this Airstream. We have, um, there's an AM FM antenna, uh, and there's also a television um, antenna. We also have a satellite dish that we had installed, um, and we have, we have also a cell phone booster antenna, and we have a Wi-Fi booster antenna, and we have the wireless antenna for the rear facing camera. <laughs> so um, from the top, this uh, there's actually quite a bit of wiring taking place up there. Yeah, definitely uh, when you're living in that full time, that's some of the stuff you gotta it's have. It's a home, yeah. And uh, we also had um, the uh, Airstreams have a uh, little pop-up, um, you know, ports in the top that, that, uh, for exhaust fans. Uh, keep the trailer cool with these, um, they call them fantastic fans. Uh, we had uh, a vent installed uh, that uh, would allow that to remain open even during uh, rain, you know, so for again, full-time living. So um, so that's what you find going on on the roof. Um, and a quick word about um, dealing with these awnings. 
Uh, most people aren't like me, they're not six feet tall, so um, accessing all of these little locks and widgets and latches and things uh, is, is accomplished with um, a small little aluminum rod. And uh, you're expected to sort of like get up here and wave your wand around and, and undo the locks and the latches. And um, our experience was uh, after our first time with the Airstream, instead what happens is, is you take the um, wand out and you smack your Airstream and you scratch it because you're trying to sort of get this little end in. Um, so what we learned almost immediately is forget the wand, uh, bring with you a small little step stool. That's yeah. a much better way to go. <laughs> so right. instead of beating the crap out of your airstream with, you know, um, with a little wand. <laughs> okay. Foundation that I would make to airstream. You'll notice that the trailer hitch is getting pretty beat up and it's starting to rust. And uh, I sure do wish that they would coat the um, hitch in the same stuff that my truck bed is coated in. I think it would be a lot more durable than this lame gray paint. 